So quite a while ago here at Tech Yes City, we took a look at the X79 Wannan board from AliExpress. And it was cheap, it came in with a pretty good price, but it wasn't a true X79 motherboard. And so I was left a little bit disappointed because it could just barely handle a six core 3930K with out of the box speeds. And you couldn't overclock or do anything like that. However, here, right beside me is an upgrade. This is the running X79 motherboard. Now it is a true X79 chipset. You've got eight dims of memory, also got what looks like a seven phase VRM. We'll be taking a closer look at that very soon, but you've also got four 16 speed PCIe slots and support apparently for slight overclock. So I'm gonna be running temperature tests on this thing today, telling you if it can survive the 3930K at overclock settings or if it can overclock or how far it can overclock because I actually haven't tested this board out yet. But another thing too, you guys have been asking me to take a look at the dual CPU socketed Wannan boards. And honestly guys, I actually have gone through dual socketed CPUs in the past and I'm not a big fan of them. They have problems with games and they also have other little problems that you can run into, especially when you're using it for desktop usage. But besides all that, they feel in my opinion, a lot laggier than single CPU solutions. But anyway, back to this running motherboard, you can currently get it for around 180 Aussie dollars and that's shipped internationally. I think that's around 130 US dollars, which isn't a bad price for a brand new X79 motherboard. Also another bonus is the build quality actually feels really solid. They've used the thick PCB, you got 10 USB slots at the back, two of those being USB 3, as well as having a black PCB and eight SATA ports. And on top of that, you get USB 3 front out and M.2 Wi-Fi connectivity support. So this board looks pretty promising, but let's open up the box, check what else is inside, take this heatsink off. Basic options for memory speed, we can go up to 1866 or 1600. Uh, which isn't too bad. I mean, having 1866 at your disposal is decent, especially if uh, you can uh, make it quad pumped. So uh, we can leave that alone. It should be automatically on auto. It should uh, rank the four memory sticks in quad channel. If it doesn't, we'll, we'll find out in Windows. But uh, going back to the CPU settings, there should be options to overclock the CPU itself. Uh, so going over here, I think it's in CPU power management. And uh, right down here, we've got power technology. You can disable that if you want custom. I do like to have the turbo states on, uh, especially when you're idling on the desktop, they help save power. Uh, but we do have overclocking down here. And so it's uh, got a ratio limit of maybe, you know, on Sandy Bridge, you could easily get these CPUs up to 4.6. But uh, just for overclocking sake to test if it works out properly, we're gonna overclock this to 4.4 gigahertz. Uh, just to see if it works. In terms of voltage control, it does look like it's very limited on this board. Um, I will just have a look and see what I can find. But uh, again, this BIOS is a very simple BIOS. I've seen this before uh, when I had the dual Xeon rig, it looks like it's pretty much the exact same BIOS. So there isn't a whole lot of control, uh, but you still do have some basic extra features which you can take advantage of. up and now it's it's staying at sort of 3.9 gigahertz maximum uh, it's sort of fluctuating between that 3.6 to 3.9 definitely not the 4.4 that I try to lock in there so I'm gonna go back into the bios try to change a few things around uh, because it does look like this wants to max out at pretty much 3.9 gigahertz since it is using the c600 chipset so uh, it's actually not using, I don't think, a, an official X79 chipset because it looks like the options are limited. And as I said before, with that uh, dual Xeon build I did in the past, the BIOS looks exactly the same. But let's try to take one more peek back in the BIOS and see what we can do before we actually start testing this thing. Though one good thing about this board so far is that it is indeed displaying quad channel memory with the 1600 MHz Corsair that we locked in there.
So we've almost been stress testing this motherboard for a good 30 minutes now, and there's some good and bad news. The first of all, the good news is, is that the VRM's okay. We're in a pretty hot ambient temperature here of 28 degrees, and it's got to around 94 degrees maximum with the IR sensor. And so this is all right at 140 watts. The problem is, however, is that we can't get above 3.9 gigahertz. Managed to get the 3.9 gigahertz completely stable uh, by changing the power limit settings in the BIOS with the seconds on the limits. Uh, but besides that, we just can't get any higher. Now, I have heard that you can get higher limits and we'll talk about that in the conclusion. But for what it is right here and what we're staring at, 140 watts delivery through the VRM should ideally be good for around 4.2 to 4.4 gigahertz at least, uh, since at this 3.9 gigahertz setting, we are indeed over vaulting for that 3.9 gigahertz. So I would like to see some manual control here because what it's doing at this 3.9 gigahertz is just over vaulting. And essentially that 140 watts is just too much for this said clock speed. Ba ba but with all that aside, let's put this motherboard back on the test bench and run it through all the tech yes paces, test out that onboard audio, onboard NIC, and also the USB ports, and play some video games on it, and just see if it's smooth with something like an RTX 2070. So we've finished taking this motherboard now through all the paces here and the good thing is is that it includes a one gigabit per second NIC and now you might be stopping and laughing there like is that standard on all motherboards that you get right gigabyte ASRock, MSI, ASUS motherboards but the thing is some Chinese motherboard manufacturers will actually only put even in 2018 and 2019 a 100 megabits per second slash 10 megabits per second NIC solution and a lot of people wouldn't even notice because their internet isn't that fast or they're not transferring files over the network at those speeds. But this motherboard does include one gigabit solution. The USB 3 speeds as well, I checked them out. They were working fine. But an odd thing about that was it seemed to cap my Kingston drive at a little over 200 megabytes when this drive is easily capable of going into like 300 and 350 megabytes. So that was a little bit odd on the USB 3. Uh, also, as we saw with the VRM temperatures, as before when we were testing that out. They got a little bit hot, but it was capable of running the uh, 3930K at its max advertised turbo multiplier. Uh, I would like to put in a 1650V2, uh, as a lot of people are buying the running combos with that CPU in particular. Perhaps it has a higher native multiplier. And because it's on 22 nanometer as opposed to 32 nanometer, it can utilize that max power limit and clock higher. I believe some people have got that CPU to 4.2 gigahertz on all cores on this particular motherboard. But here today, we only got 3.9 and in Cinebench, it got close to a thousand points. We had quad channel memory support. And also another bonus on top of that is I decided to test out the onboard audio and it's pretty bad. I mean, there's no noise filters, which is okay. Uh, but anything over plus 20 dB, 100 noise level starts to really bring some noise into the mic. So you wanna keep this on plus 20 dB volume level or 50 if you decide to get this board. Uh, but also the audio out, that's going to your headphones. I did a frequency response and there was a massive amount of bass roll off, uh, 20 Hertz and under. So if you like sub bass, you're gonna be missing out with this motherboard. But not only mention that, uh, the actual frequency response curve itself was very shaky which is indicating of cheap components used throughout the audio process there. So I wouldn't be buying this if you're an audiophile or if you are an audiophile, definitely have a separate piece of DAC amp solution ready for your headphones. But then the last thing I tested with audio was the crosstalk levels and they were actually very good, uh, about minus 80 dB. And the funny thing is on this motherboard, even at a volume level of 100, there was no leaking like we've seen with practically all the major motherboard manufacturers with Z370, Z390 and stuff in 2018 where their 
uh, left channel was leaking over to the right channel past the volume level of 90, this problem doesn't exist on this motherboard. So it can be fixed, and I would like to see that fixed on those uh, high-end motherboards in 2019. But all that aside, let's move on now to the verdict with the running motherboard. Is it worth your money? And I mean, at 130 US, it is a step up over the one and board. I would definitely buy this over that one and board. Even though it costs a little bit more, it's got more memory support. It's got a uh, quad channel memory. It's also got native features that work properly. Uh, and it just actually is an X79. Well, not really, it's a C600 chipset, uh, which does have better support than that. I think they were using like the H77 in the one and for, if I remember correctly. So this is good that they're using a proper chipset and the VRM does seem to do a better job than the one and did when it came to supporting the six core. It's just if you're into overclocking and you're looking to get, say for instance, a 4.6 gigahertz or 4.8 gigahertz overclock on a 3930K, then you're going to unfortunately be out of luck with the running board as well. Uh, but it did have good build quality and it was a step up over the one. And it is kind of recommended if you want to get, or if you say for instance, you come into cheap DDR3 memory or a cheap 3930K or a cheap uh, Xeon 1650V2, for example, which you can pick them up for very cheap. I believe I picked these uh, 3930Ks up for, I think it was $60 or something, it was, it was very cheap. So if you can get the six cores for super cheap and you're looking for a motherboard and you just can't find one or they're overpriced, the X79 boards out there, then this one will do the job, but just know it does have some limitations. I'd say the audio and also the overclocking do kind of let this down. And the VRM temps, they weren't that bad considering the ambient temperatures uh, and considering that we were pushing 140 watts through it. So not all that bad for the running board. And of course, the last benefit of this board is if you do get the Xeon chips, then you can run uh, registered DDR3 memory on this board too. So there is that option. And when it came to gaming, it was very smooth. Quad channel memory is a good thing. 3.9 gigahertz, even on Sandy Bridge over six cores, 12 threads will do a fine job in 2019, even with the latest and greatest titles, up until maybe an RTX 2060 or an RTX 2070, but after that, you may come into some problems depending on the title and depending on whether it's CPU hungry or not. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video about the running motherboard. I picked this one up off the actual uh, same way that I showed it in the video today. I got it on eBay with five or 10% off. I think I got it with 10% off because there was like a sale going on at the time. Uh, and this was actually a while ago because I had to go to America for three weeks. So didn't get a chance to uh, do, a, do anything with it until now. And so I hope you enjoyed this random look at a random unknown motherboard maker. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. Also let us know in the comments section below if you like this board, you like the aesthetic or you just like it in general, you think it's maybe a decent option. I do definitely think it's a decent option. Just I did want a little bit more, especially in terms of uh, flexibility in the BIOS and overclocking. But if you guys want me to take a look at that dual socket one and board, I can. But I'm gonna tell you straight up, I already know the conclusion with it. I'm not gonna be recommending it to pretty much the majority of people, uh, just for those who need cores and threads for specific applications on a specific budget. Anyway guys, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. If you enjoy the content as always and you wanna see it the moment it's uploaded, be sure to hit that sub button with the notification bell. And also if you wanna catch a sneak preview of the content before it hits YouTube, be sure to check us out on Instagram, Tech Yes City. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.